And done. Try talking now. Hello, I am your new examinated and caring operator. What would you like me to do? It worked. I told you I'd get that speech module installed eventually. Now I don't actually rely on beeps. What now? Uh, not sure. I didn't really plan on doing anything else tonight. You know, it's almost been four months since you did a review. Even after I agreed to let you review whatever you wanted. Yeah. Besides, I got a lot of other things to do. Halloween's coming up, but I still don't have a costume ready. You already have costumes from the past to choose from. We had a deal, and I'm not about to let you back out of it. So what? You want me to review something this month? Yes! Okay, just don't do that again. You're gonna make me think the computer's dying. You will know when it's close to dying. Trust me. Alright, so what do I review? Maybe a scary movie or something? How about a scary game? I don't know. I know you have a few in your library. How about this one? Can't run it. Way too scary. Tried and failed to beat it. You were at night six. Sorry, but I care about my heart a bit too much to play that game again. Alright, fine. These are the last ones I can find. Hey, I can work with that. You're willing to play this, but not amnesia. Doesn't look that scary. You say that now, but just... Oh, shush. Now then, let's get started. Welcome back to M-Rated, everyone. See, I told you I'd think of a name in post. My name's M, and Halloween's upon us. A time for dressing up in costumes, giving candy to trick-or-treaters, and... Most importantly, scaring people. It's a good time all around. It's also a good time to review something scary. So why not take a look at something made by a company well known for its frightening games? Ah, frictional games. These days everyone knows this group for games like Soma and Amnesia the Dark Descent, but before those two was the Penumbra series, composed of two games and an expansion pack. Now the first entry, Penumbra Overture, was based on a tech demo Frictional Games made to test out their HPL engine. However, the reception convinced them to make it a full-blown game. It was released online on March 30th, 2007, and it got mostly positive reviews, with at least one reviewer giving it a perfect score. Now I've played the first Amnesia game, and that legitimately scared the crap out of me. But some of you might be wondering why I'm not reviewing that instead. Well, one of my criteria for reviewing a game is that I have to beat it at least once. And I'm not exactly confident in my ability to beat that game. To give you an idea, the last time I played it, I was teetering on the edge of insanity with no lantern oil. But enough about that. Let's delve into the frozen depths of Penumbra Overture and see just how freaky it gets. The game begins with a letter from the protagonist, Philip, and... Huh. Good to know this story won't end well for him. Then again, this is a horror game. Happy endings aren't exactly commonplace. Anyway, Philip receives a letter from his dad a few days after his mom died. Though oddly enough, it's revealed that Howard was declared legally dead for about 30 years. Philip ends up receiving documents and instructions to destroy them, but he gets a bit too curious and winds up heading for Greenland. Now, Greenland's usually a pretty cold place. You'd be lucky if the temperature ever exceeds 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's during the summer months. Maybe things won't be so bad if he prepares properly. Ah. 
It's a good thing you're controlling Philip now, or he probably would have froze to death. You find a hatch that leads to an underground mine, and more wandering gets you inside an office with a strange-looking artifact, among other things. These things will act as save points. You'll know you can stop playing when you've used one of them, or when the screen briefly turns orange. Mind you, just about every time you use those save points, some weird blurb about Philip's father pops up. Also, there's a book on explosives in this chest. It's gonna be important later. Sorry for changing the subject, but can I just talk about how much I love the setting so far? It's a nice claustrophobic underground system that reminds me of John Carpenter's The Thing. All that's missing is a dog monster and... Ah! That was a joke! You might be thinking, hey, I picked up a hammer earlier, I could just beat them to death with it! Don't. Philip isn't kidding when he says he's done for if he has to fight anyone. The wolves can kill him in about three hits on normal difficulty. I haven't tried killing them with the hammer, but I can tell you that an item you get later on kills them in five hits. To top it off, if a wolf spots him, it'll call for reinforcements, pretty much making most fights an all-or-nothing situation unless he's by a door. And it has to be a door that takes him to another area, not one you can open and close. The best thing you can do against enemies is to avoid them, and that's where the stealth mechanics come in. Crouching allows you to hide efficiently, provided you stay still and hide behind an object. No wonder there's boxes and barrels everywhere. But sometimes enemies are unavoidable, leaving you no choice but to run. And would you believe there's a way it can get worse? Once you enter the storage area, you go into a small maze underneath the floor and see some spiders. And it just so happens that Philip has arachnophobia. Hey, spiders are cool! Well, the non-poisonous ones are. Besides, could be worse. Could be hemophobia or japanophobia. What? Hey, it sounds like there's someone on the other side! Assuming that's not the gibberish Philip's been hearing ever since he got here. Regardless, maybe they can explain what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> or not, but at least you've got a key to that one door now that ends up being destroyed by a wolf. Really emphasizes that you shouldn't fight those things. Look, a place that needs to be blown up. And look, a pickaxe that five shots wolves. Once you gather the necessary ingredients, the blockade goes BOOM! Oddly enough, this doesn't catch anyone's attention. Oh, and you're reminded that the story isn't going to end well for Philip. So after all of that, you wind up in a lower section of the mine, where you have to power up a generator. Yay, some actual light! Now I don't have to worry about making the same mistakes I made in Amnesia. After that, you come across a radio spitting out Morse code. Coincidentally, there's a paper that teaches you how to read it. Oh, and there's a walkie-talkie that'll be important in a few seconds. Good day. Good day, can you hear me? See? Time to open that fence. Wait, I hear growling. Why? Anyway, why don't you get past the- Shut up, man! You're gonna alert the wolves! Okay, yes, your name's Red. Now please shush! Take a lot more than an apology to win back my trust, Red. Still, he tries to help you out by leading you to another path to the storage room. There's just one itty bitty problem. It involves going through a maze full of spider eggs that begin to hatch the very moment you walk by them. Yeah, it's not fun, because you have to quickly block off tunnels with boulders, then dig through rubble with a pickaxe while more spiders chase after you. 
The only way to escape them completely is to break a pillar that makes the tunnel collapse. Oh. And to top it off, Red sent you through that tunnel as a punishment. With justice now served cold, I hope that we can be good friends. Hmm, let me think. Should I be friends with someone who got me killed several times because he wanted revenge? Sounds awfully convincing. At least this section's relatively calm. No monsters to speak of, just gotta find some stuff for Red. Can't stay in that room forever, though. You've gotta get to the monster that Red keeps talking about. I'm not here! You don't see me! You're not real! Come on! Get up here so I can deliver some iron justice! Yes. <laughs> huh. Revenge feels kinda good. So you eventually reach the monster, and after activating it, Red talks about himself for a bit. Seems like he's been in these caves for a long time, considering he's managed to kill some of these monsters and live. Once the digger's done its work, you reach a new area where... Great, here comes another chase. Better get a head start. Ah! A giant worm! As if wolves and spiders weren't enough, now there's giant worms! What explained the holes, though? With the worm gone, you can now explore the area. Oh, great. More spiders. Good thing there's a convenient pit nearby. Yes, die, you bastards! What? How? Ha! There's no way you can survive that! Are you serious? Jeez, this makes combat feel even more pointless. Not only do you die in less hits than almost all of your enemies, but the spiders won't even die if you destroy their eggs! As someone who knows that, in reality, destroying an egg usually kills the creature inside, I'm not too happy. When you're finished with the spiders, you pull a switch that activates the door, though it's on a timer, so you have to book it. You then enter another section of the mine, and guess what? More wolves! There are plenty of areas to explore, though, like Shaft 13. To get through Shaft 13, you have to go through more rocky tunnels that are filled to the brim with spider eggs. And chances are likely that you won't notice the rock needed to block those tunnels off because one, it's covered up by rubble, and two, you're in too much of a panic because of the spiders. I'll give the game credit where credit's due for that second point. Also, you'll find a blank note underneath a helmet in one of the lockers. Remember this for later. Now that that nonsense is over with, you pick up some items from a tool closet and head for a room with a conveyor belt. Because there's no other option, you crawl through the belt after adjusting the rock smashers a bit. You then proceed to smash up a fan and open up another belt. Also, more creepy ambiance while in a vent. We are now such good and lasting friends. Red, we are not friends. Life. After everything you did, I don't think we could be friends. Ah, a steam room. Ow. Jeez, it's just a fence! Could you stop with the droning ambiance? See? So much better. A nice calming sound with some whispers in the background. What? It's calming to me. So you push a minecart into a brick wall, where you find an old room that has a dissected worm on a table. You want something worse? How about a room with a frickin' enclosure full of their corpses? Oh, and another bloody stain on the ground. Lovely. Holy shit. There is a small place that I do not want you to visit. Even on your holidays. Red, look, I know you're a bit insane, but how long have you been down here? Now, remember that blank note? Turns out there's a code on it. That code will get you into Section C, an area of the mine with its own earth-shaking issues. Case in point, once you enter the chemical storage... Oh boy, the worm chase. This might be the most infuriating part of the game. How? Let me count the ways. 
First off, you have to run from it. You can't fight or hide. Okay, fair enough. Then you have to push crates into toxic pools so you can cross them. Again, fair. Now imagine doing all of that while the worm destroys every blockade you throw in its way. I don't know if I died more here or in the spider cave area in Shaft 13. That's how much of a mess this section made me. I wound up fighting the weak pillar at the end of the chase by sheer luck. Every other time, I went straight for the wheel that takes an eternity to open the door until you break the pillar. Hmm, what a coincidence! But at least you can grab those chemicals now. It even comes with a handy sheet telling you which chemicals are which. <sighs> now it's time to head for the underground lake. Great, I'm getting Betrayal at House on the Hill flashbacks. Red mentioned earlier to be careful on the ice because, as you quickly find out, it's rather thin. Also pay no heed to the remains of Red's meal. Across the lake is a hand holding on to a crowbar. Now Philip says he can't pry the crowbar off, so what does he do? Bash the hand with a hammer so it breaks? No. Do the same with the pickaxe? Nuh-uh. Set it on fire? Nope. So what does work? Sawing the hand off, of course! Okay, I've heard stories of people using power saws, sharp knives, and machetes to cut off limbs. I don't think an old rusty saw could get the job done under these conditions, but whatever. With crowbar in hand, you can finally open the door to the last area in Section C, the Incinerator. Once again, there's an area you have to blow up, and there happens to be a lab nearby. Good thing you got that explosives book and those chemicals. I hope you paid real close attention to those chemist notes, cause I sure as hell didn't. Now that you've made the Forbidden Death Mix, it's time to blow that blockade to kingdom come! After some careful platforming, you set it down and light the fuse. That never gets old. Congrats! You've made it to the final area of the game. So what's your reward for making it this far? Well, gain and talk to Red for starters. About time. I want to give him a piece of my mind for the stunt he pulled with the spiders. Good evening. You, you, you actually came. Why is he in there? I have knocked on the desk door for so long. Please, let him invite me in for tea. Oh. Listen. That thing with the spiders was still need to sleep indictive, but I didn't come down here to kill you, Red! The game's not gonna give me a choice, is it? Well, crap. With the key Red leaves behind, you enter his room, and it's here you learn how long Red's been trapped down here. Over 30 years. That would explain a lot, but I'm amazed he didn't go completely insane after all those years of isolation, with only himself, his books, and monsters to keep him company. After fiddling with an electrical box, the door finally opens, revealing a staircase that leads to a place called the Shelter. The note that reveals this place's name also reveals that Howard worked down here, and has been for about 30 years. So that explains the legally dead thing. Beyond the stairway is a hall with a... thing at the end of it. As you approach it, however... <laughs> and so Philip tells the player that his next chapter has begun, and the to-be-continued message pops up. The end! So that was Penumbra Overture, and... it's fairly decent. It definitely has flaws. For starters, the combat feels pointless. Everything except the spiders take more hits than you do, and even the spiders are hard to hit unless they're leaping at you. At times, it feels like the game's punishing you for trying to fight back. You can argue that you're not supposed to fight at all, but if that's the case, then why bother having a combat system in the first place? Furthermore, there are a few plot threads left hanging, with the most obvious one being the deal with Howard. We only get glimpses of what he did through some of the saves and the note at the very end. Though since this is part one, I can only assume the second game will tie everything up. Otherwise, the story's pretty good. Both Philip and Red are good characters, even though I personally disliked Red at the start. And those plot threads, usually introduced via the various notes you'll find throughout the game, provide enough intrigue to encourage someone to play the next game. As a horror game, well... Personally, I only got scared once, and that was when the wolves first showed up. Sure, I did get unnerved at the atmosphere and paranoid due to the abundance of enemies, but other than that one moment, I didn't really feel dread or fear. Now, the puzzles were handled well. 
While some of them had obvious solutions, they were often remedied by the fact that you're trying to get away from something, and when humans panic, what do we tend to do? We make mistakes. And trust me, I've died enough to realize that this game got to me. Overall, it's a good game that has an interesting story and cast, a nice and eerie atmosphere, and good puzzles. Though whether or not you'll be scared by it will depend on what terrifies you personally. Well, that's one game down. Tune in next time to see me take on the sequel, Penumbra Black Plague. Until then, what is it? Signature detected roaming outside of home. Activating protection protocols. Commencing localized scan. Scans indicate that the signature is hostile. Finishing protocols. Power will be shut down until signature has finished. Neko unit will remain operational during this time. Scan complete. Signature is no longer detected. Give me a heart attack.